The Soviet BMP-3 infantry fighting vehicle is quite unique in terms of its armament. It can shoot different types of shells of different calibers. In contrast, the American brand the IV, for example, uses only a 25mm Bushmaster chain gun and two tow anti-tank missiles, as well as a 7.62mm machine gun. The German Puma only uses a 30mm autocannon and also a 7.62mm machine gun. The BMP-3, however, is equipped with a 100mm gun which can shoot anti-tank guided missiles, as well as two types of high-explosive shells, a 30mm autocannon which can shoot high-explosive and armor-piercing rounds, and three 7.62mm machine guns. Yes, three. There has been, and still is, a lot of controversy and discussion on whether or not this diverse armament is needed on the BMP-3. To fuel this discussion a little bit further, I'm making this video to answer the question of why does the BMP-3 have so many guns? To answer this question, I'm using the information I found from this Tankograd article, which covers pretty much everything there is to know about the BMP-3. You can find a link to this article in the video description. I see the information from Tankograd as relatively correct, but I still wanted to use some information from other primary sources about the BMP-3 for this video. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any. If you know any other reliable websites, blogs, etc. where I can find good information, feel free to let me know. Anyways, let's finally talk about why the BMP-3 has so many guns. Specifically, I want to explain to you the purpose of those guns so that you can judge yourself whether or not those are necessary in today's modern combat or not. So hello and welcome and enjoy this video. In comparison to the BMP-2, the BMP-3's total number of armor-piercing rounds it carried for its 30mm autocannon increased from 160 to 195, while the total number of high-explosive rounds decreased from 340 to 305. This is most likely because of the new 100mm 2A70 cannon on the BMP-3, which the BMP-2 didn't have. The 100mm cannon took over many of the roles the 2A72 30mm high explosive rounds would fulfill, so therefore it is only logical to decrease the amount of high explosive ammo and increase the amount of armor piercing rounds for the 30mm autocannon. The purpose of the 30mm armor piercing rounds is to fight against lightly armored vehicles. Also in regards to the 30mm 2A72 autocannon, we have a graph that may help illustrate to you how the BMP-3 could use this weapon. This is a graph which calculates the chances of shooting down an American AH-64 attack helicopter with 16 rounds. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell if the calculations are made with the BMP-3 shooting from a static position or on the move. Nevertheless, we can see that the chances of shooting down an AH-64 with 16 shots of ammunition are around 60% at 2 km and 40% at 3 km. If you have some actual combat experience from War Thunder, you probably know that even though helicopters most of the time are large, they are not easy to hit at a distance if they are moving at 200 to 300 km an hour. And the graph doesn't indicate whether the helicopter in this calculation is moving or not. But because the BMP-3 doesn't have some sort of radar for anti-aircraft purposes, it's fair to say that a 60% chance at shooting down a moving helicopter at a range of 2 kilometers is very unlikely. Therefore, we can be certain that the calculations in this graph considered a static hovering AH-64 and not a moving one. The BMP-3 can shoot the 9M117 ATGM, which is the same ATGM that has already been used successfully in 100mm and 115mm bore guns. In regards to the BMP-3, it can be fired from the 100mm 2A70 cannon and is used primarily to hit targets that are about 2 km away. That's because the 2A72 autocannon is not accurate enough at this distance. For example, if one would shoot 16 shots from a static position at a target similar to an APC that is 1.75 kilometers away, only about 50%, meaning 8 out of the 16 shots, would hit. If the target is 2 kilometers away, the chance of hitting it decreases to about 41.2%. Obviously, 
The closer one is to the target, the higher the chance of hitting it. Therefore, the chance of hitting a target that is 1.2 kilometers away is 80% and the chance of hitting a target that is 1 kilometers away is 90%. Considering the above figures, the probability of hitting the target would be halved if the BMP3 is in motion. Since actually destroying an APC, or for that matter, any armored vehicle like an IFV or a tank, might take more than just a few 30mm shots and would quickly drain the BMP-3's ammo supply, it would be smarter to fire an ATGM instead. Besides the ATGM, the 2A70 can also shoot high explosive shells. That's because unlike the 2A72 autocannon, the 2A70 is much better at hitting soft targets that are far away while doing actual damage. For example, if a BMP-3 has established direct line of sight to, let's say, a group of enemy infantry close together, but they are more than 2 kilometers away, it would make more sense to use the 100mm 2A72 cannon and deliver a high explosive shell, rather than firing more or less indiscriminately with the 30mm in hopes of hitting someone. The 100mm may also provide better results at engaging up armored targets like an American Bradley, German Puma or Swedish CV-90, which the 30mm APDS rounds cannot penetrate and therefore cannot destroy at a distance. On top of that, the 2A70 100mm cannon is much more effective at destroying apartments, buildings, earth locks and other infrastructure someone might be in. Another helpful capability of the BMP-3 is that it can provide indirect fire support. It can basically do the same things light artillery can do, such as engaging enemy infantry and lightly armored vehicles. It can also be its own artillery if facing a target that is not in the direct line of sight, behind a hill for example. For such engagements, a low-velocity high-explosive shell would be used that can drop payloads across villages, small towns, hills and other natural obstacles and short ranges. But this feature has its limits because the limited gun elevation means indirect fire cannot be provided to targets that are too close. There is also another type of high-explosive shell that flies at a high velocity and can therefore reach targets that are farther away. The fact that a BMP-3 can provide indirect fire support increases a mechanized division's combat effectiveness. Arguably, the BMP-3 could even perform some duties of the Nona S self-propelled mortar, but of course, only to a limited extent, as the Nona S fires higher caliber rounds, which would be 120mm. Besides the 2A70 100mm gun and the 2A70 230mm gun, the BMP-3 also has three machine guns. Yes, three. I don't know if this is common knowledge, but I was very surprised when I found out that the coaxial machine gun is not the only machine gun on the BMP-3. There are two more. But let's first talk about the coaxial machine gun. The BMP-3 uses a coaxial 7.62mm PKTM machine gun which the gunner and commander have sights for. This coaxial machine gun is, just like most other coaxial machine guns, used to fire at enemy infantry to either suppress or eliminate them. Now, the two other machine guns are bow-mounted machine guns which are operated by two passengers sitting on the left and on the right side of the driver. Those machine guns can be elevated by 15 degrees, depressed by 5 degrees, swiveled 5 degrees inward and 30 degrees outward horizontally. Those two machine guns basically fulfill the same purpose as the coaxial machine gun, which is to eliminate or suppress enemy infantry. The range at which the bow machine guns can actually hit targets is 600 meters, but obviously less if the BMP is moving. In case the two bow machine gunners are gone, either dismounted or unconscious, the driver can also fire the bow machine guns using two button triggers close to his thumb on the steering bar. For some reason, he cannot aim the machine guns. This means that the driver can fire in the general direction of the enemy as long as the vehicle is looking in that direction without the assistance of the gunner or commander. It makes sense for the driver to be able to operate the bow machine guns because otherwise they would go to waste after the infantry dismounts. Nevertheless, one could debate whether or not bow mounted machine guns are still viable to this day. Besides the bow machine guns, there are also firing ports for the infantry on both sides of the vehicle. 
Those ports can fit AKs or PK machine guns by adding adapters to the barrels which allow them to fit into the slot. Just like the bow machine gunners, the infantry are also provided with a periscope aiming device. The firing ports exist so that the infantry can suppress or eliminate targets and infantry nearby. Considering the fact that the Soviet military doctrine at that time dictated breaking through enemy defenses, such openly scattered infantry would likely be encountered. The firing ports also allow the infantry inside to contribute to the fight in case the environment outside is too hazardous, for example if they're being harassed by artillery or mortars. Back in Soviet times, the risk would have been even bigger because Cold War tensions in regards to tactical nuclear artillery shells were high. That's also why the BMP-3 has NBC protection. Anyways, that was all I have to say for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you think I said anything that is not right or you think I should have added any additional information to this video, please let me know in the comments and share your knowledge. Besides that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.